How do you wire up a disconnect? How do you wire up a mini split? And what type of conduit should you use? Today I'm going to talk about those three things. First, we're going to go over the disconnect and the wiring. For those of you that don't know anything about wiring up a disconnect, I'm going to give you some information that may be helpful to you. Before we get started, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You want tech support, you want help with your project, go click the join button, become a member, let me know in the comments. I'll give you an email and then that'll lead to contact with me and I can help you. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians, I'm Tad. Let's get started. Today I'm replacing the conduit and the wiring inside of the conduit that comes from that electrical box and goes to my non-fused disconnect. I'll also be replacing the wiring inside of the whip or the flexible conduit that leads from that 60 amp non-fuse disconnect to my outdoor unit or my mini split. And the reason I'm doing that is because we have failed an electrical inspection. And the reason we failed an electrical inspection is because number one, below eight foot, and it may be different, you need to check the codes um, in your area. Some electrical inspectors will pass some things and some won't. So it just depends on what electrical inspector you're dealing with. But you cannot use below eight foot, below 10 foot, I'm pretty sure below eight foot, you cannot use schedule 40 conduit. You have to use schedule 80. So I've got to replace this schedule 40 to schedule 80 and that's what we're gonna be doing. Let's go ahead and talk about how you wire up this disconnect, this 230 volt disconnect and the breaker and then wire up that mini split. Oh, here is the breaker that powers the 230 volt unit. That's a 230 volt two, double pole breaker and we've got two hots. We've got our black and our white wire going to this breaker and that gives us 230 volts. And then we've got a ground wire right here. See this ground wire? This is really nice, although it's not really supposed to be hooked up right here. It's supposed to be hooked up over here where the ground is. All right, so gotta replace this conduit. It is schedule 40. This right here is schedule 40. And this right here is schedule 80. So put it up next to it. You can see the thickness of the schedule 80. It's much thicker than schedule 40. And anything that's above ground have to have schedule 80. This was half inch. This right here is three quarter. And you can see this is schedule 40. And then right here is schedule 80. So you can see the thickness. See the change in thickness there. This schedule 80 is much thicker. Got to replace this wire because it's solid wire and it has to be stranded. It cannot be, you cannot have Romex wire in this Schedule 40 conduit outside. By code, this has to be stranded wire and it's because it is double insulated. All right, now this is how we wire up the 230 volt breaker. This is the 100 amp breaker that feeds the main 100 amp box inside the house. And this right here is a 200 amp service, okay? All right, I'm gonna show you how this disconnect is wired for 230 volts. We have got our load and we've got our line on the outside. So this black and white come in, okay, from the electrical box and they go to the center, which really, that's not right. They should go to the line, which it should be on the outside. And then these wires right here that come, come from this disconnect and go to our little outdoor unit mini split, they're going to the outside, which that shouldn't be there. It should be on the inside. It should be where the load is because this is the load, right? Okay, and then this is the line. The line comes in and then load goes out. Okay, and that air conditioner is the load. So we're gonna rewire this. This is the wiring that I'm using. And this is stranded wire. I've got white, black, and green. Where's my ends? All right, you see how that's stranded? See, that's stranded right there. All right, now I've got my conduit fittings, like I've got my sweep, and that says schedule 80 PVC. And this right here is to connect to the box. All right, let's get started. Old conduit is out with the wiring inside of it. I haven't strapped the conduit up because I haven't actually glued the fittings together. You wanna to make sure that it's gonna be straight and you've got it cut to the right length. So I have that. Before I strap it to the wall, I am going to pull my wire through and then I'll glue all these fittings. That way nothing can be pulled apart. Oh yes. 
So now I'm going to unravel my wire and pull my wire and then wire up that disconnect. Let's do it. Now get the wire pulled through there. And then once you do that, then you can put all your fittings together and then glue them. All right, now I'm going to take and remove the number 10 wire from the conduit. Oh, wow. I didn't mean to remove just one wire there. Okay, come on now. Get out of there. Beautiful. Now, go ahead and run our new wire. And I need to take that off there. All right, let's go over the wiring now. So we got our black and our white stranded wire hooked up to our breaker here, double pole. If it was 110, we'd have a single pole breaker and this black would be on that single pole breaker and then the white would be on the neutral. And then there'd be a, a ground wire, which is the green wire usually, and it would go to the ground bar. That's how you took up 110. So got the breaker installed and then we go over here. And this is how we wired the disconnect. Now our wires are hooked up to the line. Okay, one here, one here. And that's our input power to the disconnect. And this is going to be our output. That's where we're going to hook these wires to. I'll show you that when I get it hooked up. All right, this is our disconnect wired now. You can see that these wires right here are going in the middle. And this is the load. And we've got our grounds hooked up. And we've got our little bushing here. Little plastic bushing. You have to have that as well part of the code I got to get one over here so let me show you the plate now just in case you don't know and this is how this goes in right here and then this right here all right now we should pass our inspection hopefully we won't have this red sticker next time and how is the mini split wired up just in case you don't know, this is your line voltage coming into the unit on the bottom. It says power. And then these two wires go to the indoor unit. And that right there is the conduit for the wire going inside the wall mount air handler. And F1 and F2 is communication wire. So power wire to the unit, power wire to the indoor unit, from the outdoor unit, and then communication wire. Pretty simple. If you fail an inspection, learn from it. It's not the end of the world. I knew better, but wasn't here and didn't think about it. And sometimes you just think slip your mind and you fail and it's okay. A little bit more money for the state. So yay for Tennessee and the more money that I had to pay. It's sad that uh, we have to pay more money, but uh, it is what it is, right? So I'll pay the money and then I can have a passing score. And I guess it's safer, right? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you're healthy and I hope you're happy. Invest in yourself today and learn as much as you possibly can because knowledge can set you free and empower you so that you can have a better life. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I will keep you cool if you let me.